Then it's chapter 3, 1, lines and angles. And the topics that we're going to cover are parallel and skew lines, parallel planes. And when a transversal cuts across two or more lines, you're going to create alternate interior angles, same side interior angles, corresponding angles, and alternate exterior angles. So start off with parallel lines. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that don't intersect. And um, they're also equidistant on it, as long as we're talking about plane geometry. And so I indicated here that AB is parallel to CD. That's what this symbol means here, parallel. And these arrowheads on here indicate that AB is parallel to CD. And this, I, in red, I showed that they're equidistant. So in this next image, I got rid of that notation about equidistant. But if you notice, I changed the arrowhead count. There's three arrowheads here, three arrowheads here. That means these are a matching pair of parallel lines. All right, skew lines. It's easier to talk about what's parallel before we talk about what's skew. This line segment, AB, appears to be parallel to this blue segment here. They don't meet, so that, you know, they appear to be parallel. But now we'll talk about skew. This line segment in the back here, HE, if you ex pretend that it's a line that extends infinitely up and down, and AB extends infinitely left and right, they will never intersect. That's because they're not on the same plane, but they are not parallel. So they are they're called skew. But, you know, they don't intersect, but they're not parallel. Okay, next frame. Parallel planes. This plane on the top, CDH, appears to be parallel to this plane down below, ABE. Okay. A transversal. Transversal, that line in blue that's cutting across those two black lines, that's a transversal. It just cuts across those lines. So now once we've created this image, we need to talk about what's interior and exterior. Between these two black lines, that's the interior. And anything outside of that is the exterior. Now we're going to talk about alternate interior angles. Interior meaning in between these two line segments here. And then I like to tell my students to draw a Z. The inside of the Z, those acute angles right there in that image, three and six are a pair of alternate interior angles. Now if you picture grabbing that Z here and here and stretching it that way, just pull it that way, you're going to create a Z with now obtuse angles. So 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles as well. Okay. Alternate exteriors. Once you identify what the alternate interiors are, then you just follow outside vertical angles to the pair of alternate exteriors. So 3 and 6 are alternate interiors, which would make 2 and 7 a pair of alternate exteriors. And likewise, if 3 and 6 are all, excuse me, uh, 4 and 5 are alternate interiors, then that would make 1 and 8 a pair of alternate exteriors. Okay. Same side interiors. That would be two interior angles that are on the same side of the uh, transversal. So 3 and 5 are a pair of alternate interiors. I didn't write this here. 3 and 5 are a pair. And 4 and 6 are the other pair. OK, of same side interiors. Some textbooks refer to them as con uh, consecutive interior angles. OK, corresponding angles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when you have the transversal, corresponding angles are on the same side as the transversal. And if you're looking above the line that's being cut across down here, you're looking above the line that's being cut over here. So 2 and 6 are a pair. Okay, um, 1 and 5 are a pair of corresponding angles. Okay, let's clear this. 
let's see, 3 and 7 are a pair of corresponding angles, and 4 and 8 are a pair of corresponding angles. Um, I thought we did alternate exteriors. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right, so we covered the, what we need to know for this section of the book. I'm going to go forward and give you the same information, just we're going to assume that the two lines um, that are being cut by the transversal are parallel. So we're going to make the assumption that AB is parallel to CD. And now we're going to learn some properties about all these labels that we just came up with. The alternate interior angles, the inside of the Z here, these are congruent angles, 3 and 6. And likewise, 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles, and those are congruent as well if AB is parallel to CD. Okay. Alternate exteriors, well, that would mean, well, 3 and 6 are congruent. Well, then, since 3 and 2 are vertical angles, then those two are congruent to each other, and 6 and 7 are congruent to each other. So by the transitive property, if 3 and 6 are congruent, and these are vertical angles, then 2 and 7 have to be congruent, and those are alternate exterior angles. And likewise, that would make 1 and 8 congruent. Okay? Let's keep going. Same side interiors. Well, they're not necessarily congruent, but they are always supplementary if AB is parallel to CD. These same side interior angles are going to be supplementary. And so will 4 and 6 will be supplementary. And corresponding angles. Well, 1 and 5 are going to be congruent, once again assuming that AB is parallel to CD. Um, let's see, 3 and 7 will be congruent, so will 2 and 6, and so will 4 and 8. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for watching this lesson.